Jess, Brother Educator. And uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Where were you on the night of July 31st, 19th? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't guarantee there will be all of us together, right? But maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. How are you? It is a new, fresh week. So if you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. I am a Brother Brand Ambassador, and today we have the fabulous other Brand Ambassador, Cindy Hogan. And we have a really fun project for you today. So pop in, say hi. If you're new, tell us where you're from, because you're joining a really fun group of people. So I see Phyllis and Kelly. Hey, guys. So uh, just real quick, we are live on the Brother Sewing Facebook and Crafting Facebook and YouTube page for sewing and crafting. So leave your comments as we go along, leave your questions, we'll try to grab them for you. And I hope you're having a beautiful week. So let's welcome Cindy. Hey Cindy. Hey. How are you today? Good, how are you today? Absolutely fantastic. It's a beautiful day outside before the storms come tomorrow. You know, it's actually beautiful here in Southwest Michigan as well. And I'm going to just capture that sunshine and hold it for the whole day. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's supposed to get up to 78 here today. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm still wearing a winter coat. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Short sleeves today. Oh, I didn't have a jacket on this morning. It was chilly this morning. So, so true. Hey, Esther, I see you pop in here. By the way, uh, so Cindy, the last few weeks I've been doing this uh, so along for the Rachel behind me. I was saying that. It's about finished. Esther just posted one ad that was super cute. I love the color. Uh, so I'm almost finished and it's going to be ready for the weekend. Well, you've got new clothes coming up. <laughs> I, I know. That's my best part. So today, you and I are going to be working on a couple projects that will make your table look great for the weekend. That is true. We're going to try for that. I can't wait. All right, so you, what do you have? I, well, let me just take a quick peek. Mine's like super easy because yours is a little more advanced. So yeah. I've got my scan and cut out ready. I've already cut some flowers for the table and I'm going to show everyone how to add some lettering and do some quick cutouts with your scan and cut to just like place pieces around the table. I always love the table to look cute. And yours is the wrapping on the cake. <laughs> Mine's the icing, yeah. So we're going to make, I've got two different varieties of these guys. This one and this one. Oh, those are so cute. And if you really want to get in there and do something else, then you could monogram your napkins. But I didn't go that far. I spent all day yesterday looking for napkins that I had made. I know I made some to match a table runner that I was doing that I did for the Scan and Cut Playbook. And it made four napkins. I have no stinking idea where those things are. You'll find them probably on Monday. And probably. Next Monday. <laughs> I have absolutely no clue. I've looked in all of my hidey holes. I've looked where all of the second, you know, the, there. when you make something, you don't just make one. You make like three or four just simply because you have to, we have to send them out for photo shoots, or at least that was the thought process last year. They did. I ended up having to do the photos. But so I had multiples. I just have no idea where they went to. <laughs> well, let's see what you have, because my favorite thing, by the way, during the entire last year of COVID is making cute napkins for the table. I've got monograms all over the place. You'd think I was from the South, like you, Cindy. <laughs> you know, if it, not standing still, we're going to put a monogram on it. Slap a monogram <laughs> on that bad boy. Needs That's it. all I remember you always saying. <laughs> Husband's underwear, go for it. It's work. It makes them cute. All okay. right. So where do you want to start? So you're if you're with me today this afternoon, you're actually gonna get a double dose of software because I'm gonna do a little software this morning. Um, we're gonna do Canvas Workspace because these were really super simple to create in Canvas Workspace and then finish at the scan and cut machine. It was easier to do it there than it was to try to because I the flowers are a freebie. And I, we always like freebies and that it's another way to use your library that you get. So That's fantastic. And I have my screen down here ready to share if you want to share. it. Perfect. Let me add that up. It's so funny, by the way, I was looking at our cameras and I was trying. I have this new chair, Cindy, and I can't get it to go down. So I know I look really much taller than you. <laughs> but unless I sit here and do squats, I'm going to be like, <laughs> I can't make mine taller. 
as tall as it goes. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. And mine, I don't know what happened to it. I love. I think I broke the knob. So let's look at your screen. <laughs> okay. Um, you want to take me off because I'm going to be looking over here. Sure. Actually, what you're going I have to bring you back up. Let me just put your screen up by itself. Hold on one second. Just that way. Um, there you go. Yeah, that way you don't get the odd side angle of me because I've got my screen on the other screen. All right. So the first thing that you're going to do, guys, is in Canvas Workspace, you're going to click on the Shapes button. It's super simple. It's You've got every built-in shape that you have on your Scan and Cut machine. And I grabbed an oval and I just drug it over there. You can smush it if you want, or you can come over and give it a true size over on the right hand side on in your edit menu. So this is your edit menu. It's the square with the four little dots around it. And I made my oval size 2.75 by 2.27. So I'm going to take my maintain aspect ratio off so that I know it's 2.27 since I smushed it to begin with and press enter and you've got your oval. Now for the um, ribbon to run through, I needed two circles. So I grabbed a circle and I made it 0.4. Yes, I pulled these numbers out of my hiney. I actually wanted them that to maintain aspect ratio that time. Um, but I tried one and the, at the size of the hole was too big. So I tried another and I liked it. And I'm going to take that little circle and move it about where I want it on my oval. Then I copied it and pasted it, or you can duplicate. So I just right mouse clicked and I chose duplicate, moved it over to the side and then went into my layers window. This is where you can easily grab different parts. So I grabbed the two circles and went back to edit. I wanted those spaced apart. And the easiest way to do this, I'm going to center them first on each other, is to distribute them. And I distribute them. I tried a couple of numbers. 1.75 seemed to be the magic number to get it to distribute them evenly. You hit that button, distribute, and there you go. And then I grouped those. So, so far, so good, right? We're pretty simple. So I'm selecting it all. I just drew around them all to grab them all. And I want a horizontal center and vertical center that. And now I'm going to group it. That's not falling apart. And that's your basic shape for your napkin ring holder. So then I went into the libraries and I was like, okay, I want to find some flowers and I don't want to have to make them myself. What have I got out there? Well, I could have picked these, but I actually picked the bouquet card. And part B, you'll find all of the flowers. And then I went in and deleted a ton of them because I really only wanted one flower, one big flower and two little ones. You can go three little ones if you want. I'm just clicking and deleting. There you go. And I needed two leaves, but Instead of trying to manipulate two of them, I just went with one and we'll manipulate it. So click and delete, click and delete, and those get gone. Or you could have gone into your layers menu and selected them all with your control key and deleted. But really click and delete is probably your easiest method. So this guy right here, I resized it manually until it visually appealed to me. And then I figured out what size that was so I could tell you all that size. And it needed to be 0.9 inches in width. But what did I forget to do? Once you take that maintain aspect ratio check mark off, it stays off. We want it to resize proportionally the whole thing. So 0.9, we're good to go. And then that little circle at the top of that lets you rotate it. And I took that and moved it up here. I wanted two of them. So how do I get two? I right mouse click and I duplicate it. 
And this one I wanted facing the opposite direction. So that is a flip function. This button right here is your flip. We flip that and we are going to move them right there. I want to align those two together. So I selected them both with the control key and we can do this right here to where they're centered up. And if you want to distribute those evenly, if it, if you want to make sure there are certain space apart, you can come down here and do 0 0.05 or you can eyeball it. Eyeballing works very well as well. Hey, and Cindy. then group those two together. Hey, Cindy, real quick. Uh -huh. um, before you leave the screen, Lucy just wants to know, how do you delete on your keyboard? She doesn't see a delete button on camera. Delete on the keyboard or you can right mouse click and choose delete. There you go, Lucy. So I'm grouping those. Now, I actually put those a little bit too far down. We'll, we'll move them up a little bit and we'll play with some text. So the next thing I needed to add to this was my text. And oop, I wanted to do one last thing before I get to text. So let me go back to my select tool and I'm going to click back on my leaves. I want those to draw and not cut. So you have a properties button that operation from cut to draw and now that's going to draw instead of cut. I went in and grabbed my text tool and I typed in happy Easter. If you are not a, a Easter celebrator, you can put in spring, whatever you, or you can put in your monogram, whatever you would like. I put in happy Easter and I have the Berlin Sands FB font and I chose bold. Actually, I chose demo bold, which is kind of bold, not real bold, but kind of bold. And I just shrunk it down until it was going to fit into my oval. If you want to see it closer, you can grab the zoom tool and just draw around it. So now we can see really up close what we've got. I'm going to move those down. And I'm actually going to un ungroup those a little bit. Let me ungroup. Well, fiddle dee dee. Easy for me to say. Ungroup. I want those. There we go. I want to rotate it a little bit less. Those are so cute. By the way, I just saw, hey, Wendy, I see you said it's blurry. It's because we're live probably because it's not blurry here. So if you if your internet's going wonky or something, that would be the reason. So when we're not live, if, if you go back and watch the replay, then it won't be. So just FYI. All right, so there we go. Too. So now I've got my leaves. I've got my happy Easter. I want Easter to happy Easter to be drawn and not cut as well because I'm going to watercolor it. Yes, I I bit the bullet and bought the watercolors. May got okay. me. How could you not? May got us all addicted to that. <laughs> May got me on that one. I have to say, I couldn't resist. I could not resist. All right. So my large flower, I'm going to just shrink it in. I made it. If let's look at our properties. That's about what I made it. Uh, one by, it was about one inch. Somewhere around there. And then I made this one much smaller. So that one was about 0.5. All right. I need two of these small ones. So I'm going to duplicate that. And I only need one large one. We should be good. Let's make sure let's click our leaves and make sure that they are drawing. Yep. And our Easter is drawing. Our oval is cutting and our flowers are cutting. Sweet. Now I'm ready to go over to the scan and cut machine. So I, mine is a wireless model. If yours is not, you can do file export transfer FCM file. <clears throat> I'm going to do um, transfer FCM file via the internet. If yours is not a wireless model, you would choose export FCM file and pick up a um, USB drive, put it in your computer and send it that way. I'm going this route. So mine will be sitting at my scan and cut machine waiting on me when we get there. Now there is one thing I probably should have done before I did that. I think I want to group these so that they don't fall apart. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> so 
I could have grouped them when I got over there, but it is is easier just to go ahead and do it here and transfer it one more time. And by okay. the way, I have to say, I love the wireless, like boom. Today, I turned on my scan and cut. I haven't used it in a couple of weeks, I guess, or at least I didn't pay. I think I actually did. And there's a little alert at the top that said update available, but last time I didn't have time. So this morning I clicked on the button. I barely made a cup of coffee and went back and the update was there. I love um, that yeah. feature. I, I mean, I truly did. It's You get addicted to it, I will have to say. And I did the same thing this morning. I did not have time to update mine yesterday. So I was like, okay, there's an update. I'd probably better do that. I could have waited and shown you all how to do that, but it, it's just simple. Touch the eye and it <laughs> asks you to go. I was thinking the same thing, but literally you, you all would have been sitting there watching us for five minutes. Like, why did we just watch that? You touch yeah. the button <laughs> where it says update and that's it. And it's done. Yes, there is a um, place where you can get the keyboard shortcuts. Oh yeah, I think go, we'll see I, that. I can't remember where that is. Um, it was part of the last update that they gave us cut keyboard shortcuts. But I will tell you, the most common ones are Control C for copy, Control V for paste, delete on your keyboard. Um, the, those are the most cop and control D for duplicate. Those are the most common ones that we use Which and control G for group. They're kind of, it's a control key with, with a, the first letter of most of the operation generally, except That's for paste. Good. Paste is V. And if you, th it, the reason I can remember that is somebody explained to me one time that the reason it's V is if you remember back in the day, I mean, if you're as old as I am, the oldest dirt, what can we say? Um, that when that your teacher wanted you to insert a word or something, she would put a little V above it. What? It, they <laughs> mark it in red and there was be a little bit V and you should have her word over there. You needed to put this in that, that was the insert. So oh, gosh, that's, maybe I didn't pay attention in that class. <laughs> somebody explained that to me one day and <laughs> since then I can remember control V is paste. Oh, that's easy. So, I am ready to go to my scan and cut machine and we can cut this out while it's cutting. You can do your thing. Perfect. Can't Let wait. This set up. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and flip cameras. You want to take me on? Sure. As soon as she comes back, I actually have a couple things set up for the scan and cut. I'm not going to be using canvas workspace, although you could, I'm doing something really easy for the beginner that just wants to quickly throw some paper on there and do something like that. And yes, I agree. Oh yeah, Phyllis, control P is print. All right, I think I see, there you are, Cindy. Yes, ma'am, there I am. I'm gonna flip to a different camera first. I thought it was on this one. All right, so the first thing I wanted to do is grab, I have an old standard mat. If yours is brand new, you might want to choose the low tack mat. I'm laughing at Sherry. Sherry says I'm not old enough. Thank you, Sherry. I'm probably totally not old enough. That's it. That's it for sure, Cindy. There you go. <laughs> I'm older than dirt. <laughs> and I use paper tape. So I am going to grab me some paper tape and put my, I've got watercolor paper on here. And I'm just going to tape around the edges. And that's just to make sure it doesn't move. Now, guys, you could get on this small piece of watercolor paper. We could have done three of these across. I'm just doing one today just so we don't have to worry with it. But you could have duplicated it there. Or if you get it over to the machine and you decide, oh, I really wanted to have three of them, you can certainly duplicate it at the machine. And we're ready. Now, the first thing I want to do is draw. So I've got my universal pen holder and I'm going to grab a permanent marker to put in it. <clears throat> Take the lid off, pop it in the pen holder and put the pen holder into this little container thing. This is for you to find the depth. Now it's really important that you get this in there tight. So you twist that little knob and push it in and it should be in there good and tight. If it's not, you can click it one more time. But if it's not in tight, it will move as you draw and you don't want it to move as you draw. And instead of my blade, I'm gonna put this into the machine. So there we go. Take my cutting blade out, put my drawing blade, my drawing cartridge in. And I'm gonna turn my machine back on. 
I'll go ahead and load the mat while we're here. Make sure you put your hand in front of it, gang, and press the load button. When it takes it up underneath the rollers, then you can let go. But it's really important to make sure that your hands are there so that it can find it. Okay, oops, wrong one. There we go. So we're at the scan and cut, right? <clears throat> I sent it wirelessly, so we're gonna retrieve data from the machine. I just pulled out my stylus, there we are. Okay, I wanna do a background scan, so I know where my paper is because I didn't put it right in the corner. I just stuck mine in the middle. All right, so once it's found it, if you can't see your paper, touch the wrench and change it to dark. Mine is usually at light, but when I'm using white paper, I touch dark. I'm gonna touch edit. I'm gonna select all. And then move that down into the paper. Now, if you wanna duplicate, you can object edit and group this, and then you can add. So you could add yourself the three that you wanted in there if you wanted to. Actually two this direction. So I'm going to delete the two that I added. If I'd done it on Canvas Workspace, I could have actually grabbed it a little bit easier. All right. So I've got it ready. I'm going to touch OK. Touch OK again because we're ready to rock and roll and we're going to tell it what we want to do. I want to draw. I'm going to go ahead and press start and it's going to draw my happy and Easter. And while it's doing its drawing thing, Angela, you want to do yours? Sure. I always like watching this. <laughs> All right. So mine, while well, hers is, yours is drawing right now. now by yep. the way, someone had asked about watercolor paper and I think they were confused that it was watercolor fabric. It's watercolor paper. Yes. It's watercolor paper. Cause you can't wash it. Cause somebody and Deborah, I use the desktop version of the software. And what else do I have? Uh, my monogram bowl, one of our, one of our fans sent it to me. Caroline sent it to me. Isn't it pretty? She did a great job on it. <laughs> You'll have to show that. I missed that one. Okay. So are you going to go to your scan and cut machine? Yep. I sure am. Okay. So, <laughs> Let's go over here. Well, first, I just finished cutting a couple of these pieces. So let me just show you what I'm doing because I'm actually having um, a few of my, my brothers, their wives, their kids coming over. So I wanted to have something fun on the tables. And so I'm big into decorating. So I copied all of these. These just cut. This is just cardstock paper. This was a built-in design. So I actually will on my table, just throw these around. And sometimes I'll put uh, handwritten notes on here that they can take with them, but I'm going to make another set and put their names on here. And then I also go back, I'll cut a few of these in different colors because I'll literally decorate the table with all of these little paper pieces. Uh, sometimes I do really fun things uh, for, you know, well, we were going to do an Easter egg hunt. I have to just tell you, Cindy, really quick. We did an Easter egg hunt last year, and we put nuts in our plastic eggs. And guess what? My squirrels ate all of the oh, eggs. Funny. So this year, we have to get a little creative. So I thought what I would do is put little gifts on the back side. So when they pick one, maybe they get something special. So just something fun, different than what we've done in the past. And then I always use the back. I, I probably won't use this for anything, so I'll toss that. But I also use these. And if once I have a few different colors, I will lay all of this on the table. And it just makes the table look super cute. You just throw it away when you're finished. Not a big deal. All right, so let me just put on this. I'm using the light tack, the low tack mat. And I'm just going to put another piece here of cardstock. Pull that in. Just going to get that in to the mat while you're on that camera. Uh, 
So right now I have the blade in here for cutting because that's what I've been using. But let me just show you. I'm going to put this blade in, which is a little different than the one Cindy had. This one has just, there's a couple pens that come with this. Scan and cut. Put that in. That down. And I'm going to take you over to the screen so you can see what I'm pressing. So I could do this on Canvas Workspace, but when I have my machine, sometimes I'm just here and I just do it right here. So it gives you two different ideas. So go into pattern and go into some lettering. Let's see, why don't we start with my niece, Allie? Okay. And it tells me the size. Do I really want it that big? Probably not. Just gonna make it a little bit smaller. Click set. I'm just gonna move this. Oh, okay, I'll get my finger out of the way. <laughs> I have a very bad habit of doing that. There's Allie. I'm gonna add. And so, I mean, even if you're just having two people over, if you're having five, I mean, who knows it these days. Um, but you can do all this in one quick step. Let's go ahead and do Jake. Make it a little smaller. I didn't pay attention to what that last number is. I'm just visually doing these. Well, you can always resize it after you're done. That's true. And I always, you know, once I add the little shapes around them, sometimes I change it then too. All right, so let's click add. I'm gonna go ahead and add a shape. Now the flower, by the way, let me just go in here real quick. This is where I chose some of the flowers. I went through some of these designs. Here are some flowers that, this is the one I used, I think this one right here is what I used for uh, the ones that I cut and put on the table. Well, that was the that was a question that was up there. What flower? Yep. Yeah, here I'll just bring one up just so, well actually I'm gonna bring up a different one because it's a smaller hole and I might be able to actually get the name around there. And let's make it a little bigger. And let's just make two for Jake and Ellie. Okay, now before I move all this around, I just wanna scan in my paper because I know that my paper isn't gonna cover the whole thing. Now you could do this in any order, by the way, but I'm gonna go ahead and just scan that just so I can see it. And my hand's on here, click start. My camera is right here, just like yours, Cindy. And I love the fact how quiet this is. It is amazing. It's down. Let's see. I'm just gonna rotate this just a little bit. And I'm only going to do a couple of these. I just want to give, especially, I know there's a ton of people here who recently got a scan and cut and they're like, where do I even start? Right? So for yeah. this one, I'm just going to draw this first and then let's rotate this one a little bit. Get Jake in there without cutting his name off. <laughs> <laughs> So if you can see that back area, I have it very light right now. It could be darker, but can you see that paper okay? Yes. Good. It's a light shadow. We can see it though. I'm going to take Allie here. Um, let's make Allie just a little bit smaller. Oops, wrong way. And if you don't want to use one of the built-in flowers, you can always just go in and use like a circle or something like that. I've played around with some of these. I don't know if you remember back um, during the holidays, I was doing this for just our little dinner parties with Wynn and I, and I was using all these different shapes, cutting it out, uh, different colors each day for, I don't know, I guess I had no life at Christmas, but <laughs> when you want something fun at home, right? All right, yeah. so I'm gonna click okay. And let's see here. Okay, and I'm going to put draw, not cut, because I put in that green. So I want to draw the whole thing for now. And this is where you click down, click on draw, and go ahead and click. I already have my pen in there that I showed you. I'm going to click start. Okay. 
<laughs> one thing I didn't check was if my pen was, uh, I've been using that pen so much, watch, I'll do this whole thing live and it ran out of ink. <laughs> well, I did forget to do something, so I'll, I'll walk them back through that when we're done, when I had to draw twice. Oh, did you? Yes, I forgot to turn off the fill. Oh. They've changed that to where it defaults to a fill is on, and I forgot to turn my fill off. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Font size was 4.3. <laughs> I love that. Brother Sows to the rescue. And Ibby, I just saw your comment too. Yes, you could totally curve the letters. So for now, this is, can you see, this is what I have for my drawings. And now I'm going to go back through here and make the flower just a little bit bigger to cut out. But I wanted to just check what this looks like. This is just a really, really quick tutorial. Now, if I have that, once I have that cut, I have all of these little pieces. So I can add this underneath. Or what I do is place all of these on the table. So as long as I have a lot of good colors, some will have their name, some will not. That's just a super, super quick, easy way to do that. I might decorate those a little bit more, though. Uh, you know, your watercolor paper would be a brilliant idea on that, by the way. That would be fun to let the kids color in their names. Oh, that's a good idea. Perfect. I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to cut them now. <laughs> yeah. There you what go. a good idea. Yes. Okay. So what I forgot to do, just so you all know, is that in the edit menu, it is automatically set to draw a fill. So go into object edit, touch this little button right here. That's the fill button and make sure that's turned off. Otherwise, you're going to get a fill pattern. And whatever the fill pattern you had last is the fill pattern that will be on there. Now, if you don't want to do any water coloring, that's a good way to color these in. You can pick a different, you can pick a fill pattern that you want and have fun. But that was not what I want. So I want to go ahead and I want to say cut. And now it's going to cut out my flowers and my oval shape. While that's cutting, I can flip over here and show you what else I did. It's going to take that all of a minute, though, guys. I know. I love it'll tell you how much time you can hardly even go, like I said, make a cup of coffee, but you do get there. Yeah. So, what you'll have is you'll have an oval with your flowers. And this is, this was really fun, I will have to say. It is addictive, and I forgot to bring my water in here. I'll have to go grab that here in a second. So pick the color that you want your letters to be. Actually, I did my leaves first, just simply because that was the biggest space. And I did a light green over the whole thing, all the leaves. And really, guys, this is super easy and addictive. And then I grabbed some green and I made sure my little stems had green all the way on them, the dark, and just kind of gave some accents here. And then I'll bring my paint, my brush that has water on it, which I've got to go grab. And we'll just kind of smear them together. And it turns out super cool. So give me two seconds here. All right. You're paying for a minute, Angela. <laughs> While you're there. Uh, so Cindy, the kind of pens that she's using, well, I'll ask her what she's using. But when we were talking about the watercolor, uh, it, it's been in quite a few. And I think Lucy asked which episodes. There were quite a few episodes there with um, May where she would make cards and things like that. You use the key is the watercolor paper. And then what happens is, you use a water brush, basically like a paintbrush dipped in water, but she used a special water brush and it would make the watercolors. I mean, it's like, it's magic. So Cindy, I knew you'd be addicted to that and I'm next on the list. I haven't ordered the paper yet. Every time I see May, I go, I plan to go to the craft store and then I get sidetracked, but I'm going to go there before I see May next month. So yeah, then you just take the your water pen don't load it up with too much water. I did the on the first one and then just kind of smear it around a little bit. Huh. 
<laughs> Arnell wants you to use purple for the name. <laughs> okay. And if you need to grab more water, you can always grab more water. There you go. That was super simple. And then I usually rinse my pen and wipe it off, my, the water pen. So she wants purple on the name, on the text. But you can see why you wouldn't want to use a watercolor pen for the, for the drawing, because it would truly make a mess. <laughs> you just have a black blob. And I did let my pen set a little bit. I'm going to have purple hands after this. And I came in with a little bit, I did a light one, and then I came in with a little dark one. You can do whatever you want to do, play with it, don't. Up into you. And I grabbed my water pen. I did the same thing. So all of my things have now been cut out. And you're going to, the, the flowers were kind of, were super simple. It, the hardest part about the flowers was keeping my fingers from getting messy. And that is not the easiest thing in the world. And y'all, y'all will get better at this as you play. It's kind of hard to do when you're trying to do it fast. You want to go slow so that you don't get a big blob. And you'll notice I'm, I actually did this on top of my scan and cut cover. And then I took, let's see here, my flower cutouts. And I've got some of these already done, so we'll use those to put things together. As you can see in my little bowl. Well, I'd be darned I can't pick that one up. I want it flipped. And pick the colors that you want your flowers to be. Just kind of give them a little color because you're going to wash it with your, not really wash it, but you're going to give it a, what am I trying to say? A watercolor look here. And I grabbed a little orange. That is what I love about this is it's so... You, you, you think this just looks so complicated and it's so easy because you're just mirroring it. You know what I'm thinking, Cindy? I'm watching you on here and I'm thinking this would be such a great craft project for the kids. So let's see. We've got four boys coming and a little girl and they're all under the age of 11. I got to keep them very busy. So besides after they go fishing, this would be a great project for them. Yeah. They can each make their own napkin holder. And really, I did the same thing with the um, little flower that I just did with that one. I picked a color and I and I cut I colored it in. So we have that ready. I'm going to move those away, and I'm going to bring up my one that I've got ready to go here. All right. So you pop the centers of one of those flowers up. If you want to do the pop-up variety. And then I just stuck a little glue on a piece of extra watercolor paper. Fast dry glue. I can't give you the name, guys, but fast dry glue. I just stuck some on my paper there. Or a glue stick, which a ton of people have been using. Yeah. Glue stick works good, too. It does. And I just basically put a little glue on the back end of that and stuck it on there. And then I did, I smushed my flowers, my little bitty baby flowers in and stuck a little glue on the back of those. How simple is that? Very. I did stick one, a flower in the middle of my big flower on this one. If you wanted to, you can do a button instead. Hey, Barbara has a quick question for you because there's been like a lot of these questions. When you come back, 
you just have to explain a little bit more about the pens you use because some were for watercolor and some were not. So I know we can't use brands, but maybe we could talk about the type. Yeah, I mean, they, it's, they are specifically water blendable. Water blendable. And then for the other one, you just used a regular pen that you used. Yep. That you showed I just used a regular permanent marker. Permanent marker. So, hey, Barbara, I don't know if you saw the whole thing at the beginning. She showed how to insert any kind of pen that you have or marker into the scan and cut using the, that special little. The universal pen holder. Universal pen holder. That's the word for it. <laughs> and if you wanted to, if you wanted a button instead, you can find these little bitty baby buttons. And that's what I did in this. Instead of using the duplicate, the flower that had the cutouts in it. I, I used one of the other flowers, just a solid flower. And after it was colored, put a button in the center of it. And Lucy said she's going to have her grandkids do this. Ivy, of course they're going to go fishing. <laughs> Diana said, put some bling in the middle of that. I'm with you on that one, Diana. Bling. Bling it up. You could bling it up as well. So then you just cut a piece of ribbon the size that you think you're going to need for your um and i use one inch ribbon fold it in half and cut it into a point hey debbie i don't know if she was using a specific tool with that glue but you could just use a toothpick to get yeah. that i just had a i had a little embossing tool or something but you could use a toothpick you could use a paintbrush anything you've got around i had that so and then I put in the ribbon on the opposite side, same way. <laughs> I agree with Peg. These are too cute. I wouldn't want to throw these away, especially if they're blinged up. They're just going to have to be reusable. <laughs> they could be very easily. There you go. And Nancy wants you to zoom in. So lift up on that when you bring it closer to the camera there. Yeah, really cute. And that's it, guys. Super simple. Very. And then I just, I, I cheated. I will say I did cheat. Hold on. Oh, good, Barbara. You did see that. <laughs> I cheated. <laughs> so I grabbed a hair, I grabbed a hair band that had not oh. been used and wrapped my napkin in that. And then I just put my little guy over the top of it. Oh, that's a good idea. And you know what? If you had the ribbon even longer, you could actually tie it. And then you'd have you like could. a double bow. You could. I just kind of liked it. I like it like that. Popping out. Everyone's so, saying super cute. And you can also come back in after your watercolors have dried. So if you wanted um, a color in the center of your flower, come back in and just add a little dot. I got to say, guys, the watercolor paper and the watercolor inks are the bomb. If, uh, especially for some, I'm not a big paper crafter person. So you wanted to see my bowl. Caroline yeah. did this for me. Caroline Booth made these for me. Hold it up closer. Way up here. There you go. Yeah, that's cute. Caroline, that I don't know if you're on here, but that is really cute. It really is st stinking cute. She did a great job. Oh, look here. I forgot. I also made a flower. I made two of the little cut up flowers. A purple one is the base and an orange one as the top, and then a pink one in the middle. So you can get as creative with this as you want. Very fun. All right, I'm done over here. I can come ask question, answer questions. Come back up here, because then I want to show them, uh, you. I've got the luminaire open, and uh, you had a kind of a fun idea for those that wanted to use embroidery and not the scan and cut. I see a lot of your ideas too, by the way. Some of you saying um, that you have new machines and you're wondering if there'll be tutorials for that specific machine. So uh, by the way, for the whole last year, we've been doing these Facebook lives and we've been featuring um, pretty much all the new machines and even older ones too. Some of you said, hey, is this only on the newest model of the scan and cut? No, it's not. All right, let me bring Cindy back up here. I think I still see your scan and cut, though, Cindy. You want to come up back up here yourself? I'm coming. <laughs> She's headed this way. Oh, Lucy of the rope basket. I know. Did, who just made that on here? I know Emily made one, and then I thought somebody else did, too. Here we go. Come on, up and join us. 
was it Kathy Stipe? That was it. Debbie says, great project. So let me just take them over to the Luminaire real quick. And let's just show them the fonts that you were talking about, which I totally agree. They're some of my absolute favorites. So let me just bring this here. And you just uh, let me know if you can't see something. So for those of you that are having fun on your embroidery machine, and this, these are not just on the Luminaire, I don't believe. No, I believe they're on a couple of machines. Yeah, so if you go into embroidery. Category three. And then font this number one four. Actually, yeah, this that one, one by the way, is one of my favorites. I, it always has been. It's been around for a little while now. But look at how pretty these are. These are the yep. ones that I used this winter when I just kept embroidering everything. And then they have smaller letters, too. Just depending yep. on what size you need. All right. And you know me, squirrel. <laughs> number four was the one that that one's got two sizes it's got a large and a small and it's got decorative elements as well Who's this? i'm just going to make this bigger so you can see it i love this so this is the bigger one and then if you scroll down there's some smaller letters and here are the elements that can go with it and just because you use the large letter doesn't mean you couldn't use the small decorative element. Oh, right. These are really cute. So you can embroider right on those napkins. And then, as Peg said, you don't have to throw them away. And then font number seven is also a good one. Font number seven? Yep. It's got, decor it's got upper and lower case. And it... I mean, it's not really a font. These are letter design. So, but number seven is a pretty one as well. Oh, this one. Yes. I love the A on this one. It reminds me very similar to something that I'm going to put on the back of my pocket for my jeans. Uh-huh. Because <laughs> it's cute. It's very cool. All right. So I'm looking here. Oh, somebody said tweezers. Yeah. Tweezers might have kept my fingers not purple. Uh <laughs> And yes, Kelly, you could do this with a scalloped edge oval instead of the circle, or instead of just the plain oval. You can have it fun and go as intricate as you want to. There is a scallop oval right there on Canvas Workspace. This whole thing could have also been built directly on the scan and cut. It's just, um, you know, those elements were there for me in, that li in the library. So I was going to have to go there anyway. And it's easier to do it on a big screen. Right. Yes, um, embroidered on the bowl. I thought it actually, yeah, we won't go there because I don't have my glasses on, but I thought she said embroidery on the ribbon and I was thinking that ribbon that you had would look so cute with using decorative stitches on it. Yes, it would. Oh, I like that idea. You can, get, you can take this as far as you want to go with it. I mean, you could do embroidery on it or you could do decorative stitches or you could, um, do heat transfer vinyl. I mean, there, there's so many things that you can, you can jazz that up a notch if you want to. You could also use these instead of as napkin holders, you could put them on um, water bottles. Oh so yeah. There's, there's many things that you can do with that. And it, like I said, if you're not an Easter person, you could put spring or you could say, welcome there. You don't have to do my whole thing. You can go and have fun. Let's see here. What else do we have? Um, let's see. I'm just making sure I didn't miss any of the questions. Hi, Louise. <laughs> oh, a Lucy wants to know if your playbook covers canvas workspace. It covers some of it. I mean, there is a project that does use it. Um, it does not go in depth into canvas workspace. It was more focused on the machine, but it does talk about registration, where to find all of your resources, how to pull in something from the library. There's, there's quite a bit of information there. And you know, transferring to and from the machine, it covers that. So, uh, Lucy, by the way, do you watch Cindy's show every Tuesday at four thirty p.m. because that is software shut in, and you can go back and watch her replays. You have a ton in there on Canvas. I do have quite a bit of Canvas Workspace stuff in there. Yeah, and how to use it with embroidery. Um, Peg what? has a question. Hey, Peg, nice to see you on YouTube. By the way. Uh, recapping, the watercolor paper spreads the colors unevenly, making them more realistic. 
it it do, I mean, it just gives it a different look. It's not necessarily more realistic, but it's not like a crayon on top of a crayon. So it, it blends those two colors together or however many colors you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So by the way, I see a handful of you that rolled in later. So by the way, uh, you can rewatch these videos anytime you want. If you're watching this on Facebook, you can share it to your page, which means that you won't lose it. Or you can come back to Brother Sews anytime to watch these. And if you're on Brother YouTube, you can just watch binge watch. So when you go to their YouTube page, click on videos. It's the second link over and you'll see all of the live shows. They're all listed by number. So uh, good luck. <laughs> you can search from t title too, but most of them are by number. Lucy, you find my scan my um, software shut in fun on my Facebook page, um, Cynthia's Embroidery One. There you go. Or YouTube. Usually or YouTube channels Cynthia's Embroidery. So depending on whether you like to watch on Facebook or whether you whether you'd rather watch on YouTube, you can watch it either place. <laughs> Pam wants to know what you're covering today. And I'll let me get your website up here. I have it here somewhere. What are you covering this afternoon? The Somebody would ask that. It's a surprise. <laughs> Don't ask her that. Don't ask her that three hours early. <laughs> there were some questions that were asked that I'm going to respond to, but then I've got to I've got to come up with a project or topic before this afternoon. So if anybody has any thoughts, go ahead. I was working on this one. This one was more involved than software. Usually, I can pull something out of the sky for that. And if you look down below, I just put brother. Uh, brothersos.com, which you can go to find, uh, you'll be able to find the blog. There, the blog's being moved over, so if there's a few days where it's down, that's why. You can find my website, Cindy's website, where you can find us, uh, all of our classes, all of our free classes, all of our not free classes, all of those things. Sometimes Brother So shares mine, sometimes they don't. So if you just follow, like and follow my page, you will definitely get notified. That's I'm always the safest. Yeah. Playbook so, available at your local dealers. Yeah. And I think, I think that was a lot, all of them. Um, well, you guys are easy today. Well, we answered them as we go. Oh, There's, Kelly loves it for a way to label. Are the yes. scan spots hard to find? No, Connie, call your local brother dealer. You can also look online for some sources. It just depends what level machine you're looking for. But even the um, dealer models are now available through the dealers online. So, Lumi. <laughs> and we all love ours as well. Uh, somebody asked if there's a playbook for the older scan and cut. There is not a playbook for the older scan and cut models. Um, a lot of what's addressed in the new one would apply, but I do not talk about blade depths because we don't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah. We talk about pressure, but not blade depth. And I saw somebody talking about that they just purchased the 10 needle or they did this year in their classes. So uh, keep an eye out because you can go back and watch Cindy is, oh my gosh, a ton of tutorials on the 10 needle that we, and with, the, and with the exception of the auto quilt sash borders, pretty much everything is applicable to the older model um, PRs. So the auto quilt sash borders is something new, but the others are applicable to it. Yeah, that should help. Um, yes, you can make this fabric. You can make this with fabric applique and use um, fabric pens, fabric markers. I actually have, I have inks that I sell that that you could certainly color them in and do like watercolor. So, Timothy, what's a good starting serger to begin with? Oh, that's a good question. You know, um, oh, I got to look up the the pace setter is a great one. Uh, if you call your local brother dealer for that, that's an easy one to thread, um, easy to use. It's It even still comes with a couple of extra feet, which I think a lot of people don't even realize your serger comes with extra feet. I know. And one is a blind ham foot usually. Usually, not always. I'm just going to say usually because you might be watching this five years from now and they don't even have that foot anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it comes with extra feet. So you can do so much more with your serger, but uh, the pace setter is a great beginner serger. Just... Uh, and I, once again, I will say go with the one with the automatic needle threader. Oh yeah. They, I don't think the pace setter, does the pace setter have that one? Yeah. There's a, there's, there is, there is one of the pace setter lines. It's not the first one. Yeah. <laughs> Peg says the one you can afford. 
<laughs> I think that I was be used to threading, especially, I mean, it's pretty much a right to left thread thing. So you do your right loop or your some other, so other brands are left to right. Some other brands. So you have to look at your manual. Our, our brand is generally right to left and you're good to go. And you know, there it's so easy. A lot of times I end up tying off and pulling through. And if you just pull your thread out of the tension disc, you don't have to worry about getting a bunch of lint in there. It works so fast. Yeah. All right, do I see? You guys had a lot of great questions today. Oh, Catherine's in Florida. <laughs> you you have the luminaire and you just bought the Stellaire. Oh my goodness gracious. Catherine, your sewing room is <laughs> gotta be awesome. It's rocking, yes. <laughs> Great to see you, Marsha. Oh, you're welcome, Lucy. And happy Passover to those of you who celebrate Passover. And you could, hey, this would work for Passover as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would work for, it would work for just spring day, for heaven's yes. sakes. I love those flowers. They're so cute. And actually, those napkin covers would have been great when I was trying to, uh, well, I was trying to do the cooking. We won't go there. <laughs> So, uh, by the way, I like the idea of the flowers with little things in the back. That's going to be our little um, treat for, oh, I don't think the kids are watching, or if they weren't, they're going to say, oh my gosh, we already know about the flowers. <laughs> <laughs> but just so you know, if you decide to do an Easter egg hunt, don't put candy yeah. with nuts and put them outside the day before. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it does not can ferret out anything. Uh, it did not turn out well. In fact, the kids called it. They said, if you put that out there, your squirrels are going to eat through those. And I said, I don't think they will. And do you know the next day there was plastic all over the place. They ate right through those things. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, Cindy, I can't. I'm looking forward to seeing your show today. Uh, for those of you that like to watch the whole week, you have Cindy this afternoon at 430 Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, 1.30 Eastern is my show. I'm finishing up this top here and the tank top that goes with it. So I'd love to see you. That is on my page if you look below. And also Emily is tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Thursday at noon, uh, we have another great show from you with Brother Educators. I think that's everything. And then Saturday is an It's So Easy episode. Oh, they've got another marathon, another watch along, huh? Just a watch, just as others uh, shows there at noon, not like a whole bunch in a row, not a binge watch, but just a one show watch. One show. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, everybody thinks squirrels are smart. They sure are. I guess if I quit feeding them every day, they would probably. <laughs> they might find someplace else or you need to borrow princess for a while. That would, well, no, princess would probably eat all my squirrels. In fact, she them. She, I, the, we have two new baby squirrels out back and guess who was knocking on the door this morning? They literally come to the door and tap with their tail and you look at them and they just sit at you with their back feet and wait for their nuts. <laughs> <laughs> this whole COVID thing has really, uh, I need a life, Cindy. <laughs> Spoil the squirrels. You're spoiling your squirrels. Well, Princess would certainly give them a, a chase. She I loves don't. chasing squirrels. She never catches them, but she loves chasing them. <laughs> So fun. Well, Cindy, it's great to see you. What a great project. I look forward to seeing you this afternoon. All of Brother Sewing and Crafting family, thank you for joining us. And Brother, thank you for letting your ambassadors take over your page. Thanks so much, Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. <laughs>